Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to check fresh release from Minyard. It is a kit which is modded in 135 scale and it copies B-type military omnibus. So obviously it comes from World War 1 and this is a completely new tooled release. Here we have commercial samples so it means you will get exactly the same stuff as what you will see here. So first of all, box size, I would say it's typical for mini art. Here you can see comparison with my hand. We have quite nice box art uh, here, which is made by Booth 2019 still. Um, next on the side we have here torn apart box. Don't I mean don't pay attention to this because it is just a matter of our post service but everything inside is intact. But here we have some information about the kit then on the other side we have some uh, marking options which are included here so as you can see here um, five of them in total and all of them can be replicated just with this plastic. Let's open it. In the meantime, let me remind you that you can support us financially. There is a special donate button on our website, so you can just click it and you will be redirected to the PayPal gate and you will be able to choose how much you would like to help us with. And be sure that all this money will be used for new photo and video equipment, which will actually improve quality of our photo and video reviews. Okay, so here we have all plastic frames packed into the same plastic bag. It is also quite typical for mini art, I would say, sealed plastic bag. And now we are going to open it and check everything closer. Another interesting feature is that once you open this plastic bag, you won't be able to close it. I mean, to put everything in the same, um, I would say, layout as it was before. So be aware of this if you want to store the plastic screws once you open them. Or maybe you like to open the kit, take a look at the sprues and then put them back. Well, it won't be easy with this kit. So let's remove the plastic bag. Okay, on the top as you can see we have small envelope and the sealed plastic bag. Another one, so I'm going to open it as well. This brand just loves sealed plastic bags, I guess. Okay. So, here we are, let's move it here, then we open this plastic bag, actually tear it apart because I don't have time to spend with this plastic bag. Anyway, here on the first frame we have uh, small lenses for headlamps and other clear elements. And molding quality seems to be fine, obviously there are no masks included, so you will have to do all with your own hands, but that's really nice molding um, quality we get here out of the box. So that's the thing I appreciate from Minyard. Here next we have small decal sheet, as you can see here, um, manufacturer placed all necessary symbols for five marking options, as you remember. Everything is printed in decograph and printing quality seems to be fine, so I hope it will be easy to work with this as well. Next we have two absolutely identical plastic frames, so let's not forget that this is omnibus, so that's why we have a lot of uh, clear elements. Of course I will show you only one sprue. So as you can see these are large clear um, pieces and of course it would be cool to have some mask set because otherwise you will be um, you will have to do everything with your own hands and sharp knife and it's quite tedious procedure in my opinion. Next we have small envelope with mini art logo so I'm going to open it and here inside we have tiny P thread which features all necessary parts for external and internal detailing. That's a really cool bonus, I mean you don't have to pay for this, you get it out of the box. So it will be handy for fine detailing of the kit. And here by the way you can see that we have number plates which are made out of PE parts. Here you can see them closer. That's a really neat addition and of course with dry brushing it would be even a uh, better looking result. Next we start with grey plastic spruce. So first of all is this frame. Let's zoom out a bit. Now you should be able to see it. So here we have various parts. Frankly speaking I am not even able to recognize what will be used where. But for example here we have suspension parts. Here we have some drivetrain parts. That's the main frame uh, bars. Also here we have some of the suspension parts and cap 
parts, but that's pretty much all. I guess we will have to consult the assembly manual in order to understand what goes where, but note also this type of molding. I mean, thin part which is attached in a lot of um, connection points. Here I would recommend to be extra careful because otherwise you might end up with broken part and that will be a really sad thing to have because otherwise you have to um, fix it somehow and it's not as easy task as it might sound. Okay, next we have another plastic sprue. This one is a bit more impressive in my opinion. Why? Because here manufacturer placed first of all this one piece bathtub, as you can see that will be used as a floor for this bus. We also have here the roof panel which also features some promoted elements. Uh, here you can see the side panel, another side panel and some of the body parts. Also here you can see one piece uh, steps which is quite cool. I mean you won't have to waste your time while trying to get the right alignment. You get it right out of the box and I mean that's just a matter of um, careful assembly. Maybe you can play with weathering on these parts because obviously stairs will be scratched and um, paint will be weathered on these parts. So it's worth replicating it in 135 scale. Okay, let's move on. Next we have two identical plastic frames as far as you can see. So here you can see and now I'm trying to understand what is here. Just give me a second. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Anyway. Ah, I see. So here we have one small frame. I will jump to this. And as you can see, this small part is broken. It is broken due to the tight packaging of the kit and so this part was pressed and that's why it got broken. Of course it can be fixed but I mean that's how it should look like and that's what we get due to the tight packaging. So be careful with this and always check the such kits before purchase because otherwise you might end up with broken parts. Maybe camera will be kind to focus on those parts. Come on! Just give me a sec. Okay let's do it like this. doesn't want to focus. Hmm. Okay, anyway, I'll show it like this. So here you can see it. And these are side fenders. So it will be, I mean, it will be important to fix them. But frankly speaking, I do not understand side parts division because obviously they will be broken due to tight packaging and obviously you have to fix them. And this kind of design repeats on the next sprue, you will see. But here we are going on with this frame. As you can see here we have some side parts and a lot of small elements, really tiny ones. Here you can see comparison with my finger. So be careful with these parts, especially not to lose them. That will be quite important thing to do because otherwise the carpet monster will eat them for sure. Okay. Next we have Two more plastic frames of this type, just to show you the proof, let's say, that they are the same and I am not lazy. Okay. Next we have exactly this type of spruce which I was talking about here. Again we have these side fenders, our view arches which are promoted just like this. So due to tight packaging they will be pressed and I mean as you can see my parts arrived intact but I mean it's just a matter of chance so be sure to check them before purchase. Here you can also see the road wheels. These will be assembled out of several parts. These are plastic parts which is really cool because you won't have to work with vinyl elements and that means easier painting, easier weathering and of course uh, better final result in 135 scale it will be important. And this sprue is given in two pieces. Here you can see they are absolutely identical. Okay. Next we have tiny sprue with various additional elements. Nothing serious I would say, just separate panels which will require you know, careful installation of course. Next we have 
By the way, this sprue, as far as I can see, no, it's not the same. Okay, next we have the side panels for the rear section. As you can see, they are given on two identical plastic frames, so we are going to zoom in in order to check them closer. Uh, here, these panels have slight wooden texture, so it will be worth working on bringing it out, maybe with help of painting techniques, maybe with help of weathering, but definitely it's worth showing it on your model. Here you can see that it is also replicated from another side, which is really cool, in my opinion. Next, we have smaller plastic frame. This one again is dedicated to various Pioneer tools and boxes. Nothing, I would say, special. Okay, next we have interconnection between sprues. So here we have various minor elements for the um, technical parts, I would say. So it means for the drivetrain and for the um, suspension parts. And a lot of thin parts, a lot of small parts. Here you can see steering wheel and four attachment points. So be careful with those, do not hurry and especially do not use the plastic sprue cutters. Use the plastic saw because otherwise you might end up with some funny time with those parts. And next is a quite funny feature. Here we have the foam which protects those thin parts from breaking. So here they put the foam in order to protect those parts, but there is nothing to protect the wheel arches which is so broken due to tight packaging. I'm surprising seriously, but uh, here we have a lot of parts for external body panels. I'm not sure where these thin tubes will be used, but note uh, amount of the attachment points here, so you will have to use plastic saw because with plastic cutters it will be difficult to separate them. And here is the view from another side, so quite nice molding quality, but with thin parts you will have to be extra careful. Next we have assembly manual, so here it is. This one is printed in typical mini art uh, format, so it means large brochure, color printed brochure, and we have short list of the features, but um, we do not have parts count anymore. Next we continue with, just give me a second, Let's do it like this. So we continue with marking options. Uh, first marking option comes from Brighton 1914. Another one comes from Bologna 1914. And here we have parts map. Next, another parts map. So I guess all parts will be used surprisingly. Um, assembly process starts with engine. And it should be quite detailed out of the box. So just the matter of weathering this power plant and you will get really nice result out of the box without adding anything additional, buying some resin parts or something else, what you should do with some other kits. Here you get everything out of the box. Next we continue with mainframe, as you can see it should be built out of several parts, um, the spring bar suspensions, and next we continue with uh, more of those uh, suspension parts installed on the mainframe. Here we have the uh, gear. Actually, that's a wheel axle. Next, we continue with first parts for the front cap. As you can see, these are wooden panels. And note that you will have also to use the metal wire. It is not included into the kit, but here we have the exact drawings on the length you should use and also on the band. It might be useful for a nice result. Here you assemble the radiator which will be in the front obviously. Next we install the wheel axles. Here you assemble wheels. Of course you will have to repeat it four times. Next we have the number plates. As you remember they are molded, um, actually made out of PE parts, out of metal. That's really cool material to play with some dry brushing in my opinion. Here we continue with some parts for the front cabin. Next we assemble the rear section and it will be a matter of combining a lot of panels together. So be wary of the alignment of all this stuff together because these are not tiny parts. So it will be um, necessary to combine them in the right way so that you won't get the bent <laughs> rear section, the passenger section. Next we continue with the top section. As far as I can understand here we installed the seats as well. Railings. 
Next, we continue with stairs. As you remember, they are molded as one piece parts. Uh, here we have these view arches. So, with view arches, as you remember, you will have to fix one of the parts. I mean, my kit because it arrived broken. And here we have the final step, so you install the wheels. And that's quite funny that here we have the right assembly sequence where uh, wheels are installed in the last place. Because usually manufacturers put them in the third step and it's like, yeah, nice. Here we have third marking option, that's the vehicle from spring 1915. Next we continue with fourth marking option which comes from autumn 1916, which was also used as an ambulance. Next one comes from summer 1917 and also here we have advertisement for the railway non-brake flatbed in 135 scale obviously we will check it a bit later. Here we have paint chart and some posters which might be used inside the vehicle you can place them in order to get a more or less realistic appearance in 135 scale. But don't forget that figure is um, will be even better. I think Mini Art has some suitable kits in the same scale. So, as I said, this kit is already available, you can get it on Modelimax website and in my opinion it's really decent plastic but some of the packaging features, let's say, they make it a bit, um, I would say, uh, watery to get it because you are not sure what you will get, if those will be broken parts or not so if you can check it before purchase it will be worth doing it of course, I will be happy to hear your opinion about this kit here in the comment section below. If you like this video, don't forget to press the like button. Don't forget also that you can support us financially. And I will see you in the next video review as usual. Bye!